Hello, and welcome to another World of Tanks replay. This time it is not a random battle, it is a stronghold battle. I'm playing with the lava guys, obviously, and it's a tier 8. And as you can see on our uh, team list, we have a 50 Hundo, IS3s, VZ111s, and then a mix of mediums and lights. And this setup is not necessarily serious like we try to balance it a bit so we have some heavy tanks and some mediums and enough lights to spot but otherwise we don't try hard when we play strongs we just play for fun and still end up winning which is <laughs> even more fun and we're playing against a 5100 is3 some kb4 t30s so i mean all in all they have a more serious setup but not necessarily good setup for this map because it steps. And the reason I'm showing you this replay is that firstly I can show you how it is to play a stronghold for those of you who don't know how it's like. And secondly I'll show you how to scout on steps because there's a great <coughs> initial spotting position that allows you to get spots on everything that's move that is moving across B67. It's a bit risky to, to the route I use in this game but you can uh, <coughs> you can adjust it as you see fit, but it's really really strong to just spot everything. And then also, oh, we might as well start. And then I can speak while I scout. Uh, and then later I'll show you how to deal with uh, 3090s in the scout tank, like a, my T54 lightweight here. And what I've in the <coughs> countdown you could have ma maybe you saw in the chat log that I was pinging the map furiously and I was just to explain that I needed a scout down the west and everything else down the east because I wanted to know where they were and then we would just see it accordingly and here you can see that's the spot I basically get everything spotted and then you want to be you can see here there's a dip here you want to drive along this so I, I took a slightly wrong route I should have gone like that but I've, I went a bit too far ahead but if you do like this especially in the T54 lightweight you are hold down which makes you a harder target to hit and also you're be below this dip here obviously since they changed the steps map you're a bit uh, in the open when you drive across here but it's okay if, you, if you, you should drive across and then get this rock between you and whatever is over here and then you can drive to safety which is what I'm trying to do with some wiggling so here you can see I'm getting over to the rock not <laughs> perfectly but just in safety and I was lucky enough that the IS-3 uh, did no uh, <coughs> damage to me. Now, what I'm noticing here, I mean, I, I'm the field commander when I, we play with uh, lava guys. So I was in charge, so I saw that they had everything over there, like every single tank. So I, I order our two light tanks to follow me, and then we clear down the 1, 2, 3 line to see what they might have over there, because the 5100 is not spotted. And if they have nothing, on the one to three line we can start to, to acquire a flanking position on their heavies and while we were doing this I just told our blob to just stay put like let them come to you if needed don't take unnecessary damage because they had T32 and T34 tanks which is just better than uh, our tanks for hill fighting so while they're doing that we're just scouting here we have a T49, RU and me against triple 3090s and here they are. I was expecting them to come this way. And here, okay, now I'll just pause. Okay, so they have two of the 3090s and the third one will be here somewhere. Like, they would, they would be retarded to only send two. If they pin every single shot on us, they can kill us. Which is not nice, or not what we want <laughs> from 3090s. But what the 3090 can't do is fire on the move. So what you want to do in light tanks like this, this all, I mean this also <coughs> counts for random battle, random battles, but not quite in the same way, because it's not often you have a pure scout on scout fight with nothing else. <coughs> but what you would basically want to do, and we were trying to, I was trying to tell this to our two scout friends, is to RT49 should have driven or should drive back, and we we should simply just fight them at a distance on the move because they can't hit for yeah anything <laughs> while driving 
whereas both the T54 Lightweight and the IU251 can hit quite reliably at a distance. And even so, if they start to miss, like if they fired half the clips at us and done no damage, we can just rush them because then they can't clip us and all of a sudden we can control the engagement. So basically, you want to control when and where to fight. So as you can see here, our T49 didn't get out in time. I'm, trying to, I'm telling our IU to get out, but sadly not. And here I'm trying to count how many shots they have. I rolled slightly higher, I think, on the... Oh, no, I don't. Okay. But yeah, so we killed one. One for 90. So now it's one for one. So far. I know that this guy has fired two to three times. This guy fired once at least. So that means five shells on him. And let's just say four on him just to be safe. And we are both full health. So we, we can survive this if we share health. So now I told uh, the RU251 to fall back. Like just get at a distance here and then just <coughs> fight them on the ridge line and as you can see I tried to I bounce one shot so that's one less shot now it's a total of nine shells eight shells and now he unfortunately made the mistake or are you to isolate himself I'm trying to get down and take the shots I'm not trying to <laughs> push him away, but sadly our RU sat there. I've, he was trying to get away, I think. He should have just got gone over here. But at least now I know that this first 19 in front of me can't clip me whatsoever. He's even reloaded now. So I just kill him. I decide to go after the, the other 3090 immediately before he's reloaded. But then a 5100 is spotted. So I decide, yep, yeah, nope. And here I auto-aim the 3090 when he's around. You can hear me auto-aim a lot. And that's the way you want to fight 3090s. Like in a scout battle like this, just auto-aim a 3090 because that way the server knows that you're aiming at the 3090. And you can concentrate on driving and avoiding hits and so on. And also it allows me to, for instance, now I'm just auto-aimed and I'm just keeping an eye on when my aim, you can see my aiming reticle is on the hill at the moment. So I'm just keeping an eye on that while just getting away. And I'm counting how many shots the 5100 fired. And he's fired once so far. He has the same problem as the 3090. In that he's not the most accurate uh, on the move. And here I'm just... While this has been going on, they have been working in the east, just trading a bit. and But not anything spectacular. So I'm just falling back now because there's no way I can win this. So I'm just falling back and our Fish 100 uh, is now falling into our base so he can help me with the Fish 100. And then the 39 gen enemy team called me Cheetah, which is... His quote was actually, it's sad to see cl the clans have players like you and then I'm the commander. I mean, that's... <laughs> oh, I smiled at that. I don't know what, why, why he thought I was such a cheater, but apparently I was. So here I'm trying to kite this 3019. Like he's not expecting me to sit here. I try to sneak a shot into him, but I can't. And sadly, as you can see there, the fifth. It's a bit hard to see. Oh, there it is. The fish 100 just clips my front when I when I was going down, which is unf it was unfortunate. But I have fish 100 support now, so he's kaput. And now that fish 100 is a bit. Oops. And I know he's not fully reloaded. And now we're like, okay, we need to. Now we need to kill him because I'm asking the fish 100, our 50 100, to join me, and then fight this fish 100 because he can't clip both of us, and we need to kill him because now, as you can see, the east side is beginning to push, and it's we have two tanks, like just to. This was what I was thinking. We we have two tanks over here, me and our fish 100. So that means that the fight over here, oh yeah, and they have one fish 100. It means that that fight over there is e on equal terms, but they have more health and bigger guns. So I want to just quickly kill this fish 100, so that we can free up my gun and the fish 100's gun to go in and clean up and get the advantage going. 
So I just tell the fish hunter to just go. He said he, he only had four shots. But I said that's fine, that's all we need, we just need. Exactly, and now the fish hunter is completely messing up. I mean, shot twice into the ground, now he's just dead. I think he was trying to ram, and then he bounces me as well, so. Out of three shots, the fish hunter did nothing. And now we're quickly moving over to aid. As you can see, they, they are half health on a good bit of their uh, tanks. Oh, and in chat, you can see me going <coughs> tell them to learn, learn to play autoloader. But that was more like me being quite smug that I <coughs> managed to basically kite 50 90s. And now it's just cleaning up. Now. Oh, and you, you can see me switch to APCR here. Now what the enemy team should have done... Uh, ...would have been to actually push their side, this side over here, a lot earlier. They had the tanks forward, they were too passive, and sending... Like, 1390s... Oh, let's pause before the... 1390s and 5100s are great at driving in, pew pew pew, and driving away. Whereas the way we played it, or it, mainly me, but what we were trying to make happen with all of the lights on the west was to make it a long fight, like a bit of trading, falling back, a bit of trading. So you want to, as an autoloader, you want the engagement to be as short as possible. Go in, dump your clip, go out. And when you're fighting an autoloader, you want to avoid them being able to do that. So they're 31390s going in. <clears throat> first off, driving here is stupid at the 1390. In the open, actually, I can enhance the map a bit. Driving here at the 1390 is stupid because it's in the open. They can't hit for shit on the move. They should have driven along the banks here because if they met us, which they did, they would have been able to surprise us a bit easier and swarm us. And then the 5100 just doodling along behind them was also a bit. Yeah. I thought that that was a weird move, because their 3090s, if they knew what they were doing, should have been able to deal with us light tanks. And again, like, if I were them, I would have maybe just stayed here, had one 3090 spot here, and then the moment you see the light tanks here, our light tanks, you push in with everything on this one flank. If 3090s, 5100s, everything just go in, clip, focus fire, because we have three guns over here, not doing anything. So if they have all of their tanks here pushing in, it means they would have the, a massive gun advantage and health advantage because, I mean, we had a 416 and Type 59s, and they had heavy tanks and heavy tanks and heavy tanks. So, I mean, that is what they should have done. Like, not send three 3390s here, and especially not drive here with the 3390s. You, they should have driven through here because they want to keep the engagement range close so they can close in quickly, clip and get away. But what they should have done by the way they moved would have or should have been one scout maybe on the train tracks here just to spot through the base and if they cross and then the rest just here maybe maybe one here and one in the middle just the scouts one yeah spread out here and the rest just sitting here because if they didn't see us move over here on the west they could have pushed the east quite aggressively and just ruffled our tanks here before our light tanks in the west could have <coughs> gone in. Like obviously the risk is that then we cap them out but if they do it properly the 1390s drive in, dump and drive back or they could even leave one tank, just a KV-4 for instance because it's so slow. Leave it here on the ridge line or a T-32 sitting at the ridge lines here so that they could turn around and defend. Just like having one, a few tanks, or a tank even, sitting at the back just keeping an eye on the, the cap. But I mean, they overall it was, it was an interesting game. And I hope you learned, or at least it got some ideas as to how to deal with autoloaders when you're in a non-autoloader, especially in an engagement like you see in Strongholds where they have autoloaders and you don't, especially light tanks. So yeah, and in this game I I ended up top on damage on our team, uh, 3.2k damage in a Type 54 lightweight.
I think it's a great tank for strongholds because it's a medium and a light tank in one package. You can bounce stuff and you have a good gun and great alpha. So I think it's a great little machine. Probably my favorite tank to drive in strongholds. Besides maybe 3090 and 5100 for more serious play. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this uh, new or <clears throat> different replay instead of just a random battle. So a bit more team focused. And if you have any comments or questions, as always, feel free to leave them down below. And I hope to see you on the battlefield, maybe even in a stronghold, who knows. <laughs> and otherwise, hopefully I will see you for my next video. So bye bye.